Nicole, I'm from Maple Hill. And I'm Ian, I'm from Kaksaki, Athens. Okay, and today we're going to talk about the reflection and refraction of light. And so you guys probably know what reflection is, but refraction is something you might not have talked about already. So, before we begin, I just want to make sure everybody, uh, can you guys all get in pairs? Um, we're going to talk about some stuff together. So we'll get in pairs. Okay. So, I bet you guys all know that light reflects when it hits a mirror. And I can prove that to you guys, if you guys all just want to look at the ceiling in a second. See? There's the green light. What you guys might not know is how the reflection of light changes as the angle that the light hits it. So in pairs, you guys want to talk about what you think is going to happen to the light as I change the angle of the ray. Right. We'll talk. Okay. All right. So what actually happens? Let's see. All right. So we're going to start at a very it's coming mainly straight on, and then I'm going to change the angle and see how the angle. Bigger and bigger. All right. Now we're going to talk about that. Uh, this is how reflection works. So the angle of incident ray is the, the ray that I sh sh shined on the mirror. That's the incident ray. The angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the line that's perpendicular to the boundary, which is our mirror. The angle of incidence is the same as the angle of reflection, or the angle between the reflected ray and the normal. And so, as we change this, and we made it wider, made that angle bigger, bigger, the reflected ray also got bigger and bigger. And so that's reflection. Okay, and here another example of reflection is this cubic zirconia, which is kind of like a diamond, and because this has uh, various um, facets and cuts on it, each of those boundary interactions acts kind of like a mirror, reflecting some of the light, but also letting some through to reflect off another surface. So it can create a unique pattern. So if you look on a ceiling, let me shine this, it creates a unique pattern or the gem. I don't, I don't know what else to say for that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to talk about refraction, which is something you guys probably haven't heard of too much. So you know when you put your hand in water, or you put your hand behind your water bottle and it looks all funny? But that's because the light bends as it changes in a, uh, when it goes into a different material. And so I can show you this, guys, with this cool, clear jello square. All right, so I'm going to point the laser into it, and we're going to see how it bends. So as you can see, the light should be going on a straight path, but because it comes out of this material, it bends. Pretty cool, huh? And now this uh, will happen between any boundaries that the light can travel through, such as this uh, bucket of water that we have put a little bit of milk in to suspend particles for the laser to bounce off so you can see the laser. So you can see here that I'm pointing the light, that this laser should be hitting over here because that would be straight. But because of refraction, it's hitting over here. And then you can go all the way around the tank like that. And, be, and when it's going straight on, there is no uh, angle difference from the normal to uh, where the light is going. So it still goes straight on. Now we're going to talk about something that's called total internal reflection. So this is a pretty cool thing where all the light gets trapped inside this jello square. It just reflects. I have to shine it in the other end, it works better. Oh, the the other end. Okay. 
So as you can see, I can move it all around and all the light stays in the jello square. And this is really important with fiber optics. This is how our internet works. And you'll hear a little bit more about that from me. Uh, now, this is a more technologically advanced version of that. Uh, this is actually a fiber optic cable, so this would be used in uh, transmission, actual transmission of signals. So if, Nicole, you want to just take that and do whatever you want with that, no matter what happens to this wire, if I shine a light in this end, it's going to come out the other end. If I turn it off, it turns off. If I turn it on, it turns on. And you can bend that all around and it's still, it's still going to work. It doesn't matter. And now this is very important in signal transmission because uh, it transmits information at the speed of light, which is very useful. And there are various ways to transmit signals, such as Morse code here, which uh, is a series of dots and dashes, dots being short pulses, dashes being longer pulses with spaces in between them to detect code. So I can send a simple signal right now of, if you want to point that, S, O, S. So now we have a game for you. <laughs> We're going to pass out these fiber optic cables. And you guys can all look at here for reference. And we have three lasers, and we'll pass those out so you guys get in pairs of er, three teams. And you guys are going to try to tell each other a code using the fiber optics. And so you can do whatever you want. You can use the short pulses, short pulses which are the dots, and the long pulses, which are the lines. That's our game.